So this is the first video I've made about my uh, lovely old car, this uh, Volvo 240 Estate. I've done quite a few fixes on it before and uh, I've been kind of tempted to try to make a video about each one. The engine tends to be pretty good in this car. Everything else gradually goes wrong because it, this is a 27 year old car. I've just kind of gradually been fixing it, occasionally I have to send it to the garage as well. Um, but yeah, the engine does tend to, to run very strongly. Uh, but just the other day while I was driving it, I noticed, uh, first of all, it started hiccuping while it was idling, and then it actually started to hiccup while I was driving it at a reasonable speed as well, which is, is quite alarming. Um, however, I think I may have found the problem. So this is a view of the engine from the front passenger side, or if you're in America, the front driver's side. What I was doing is looking for leaks in the vacuum hose system. Yeah, this joint here looks very badly kind of corroded or decayed. It's not actually leaking, but what seems to be happening is because there's actually a vacuum in this pipe here, um, it's actually sucking inwards when the engine switches on. Um, and that's causing it to cut off its own air supply. So as the engine's running, this closes up, cuts the air supply off, the engine starts to die, and then the pipe reopens again, um, causing this kind of hiccup. And it may be possible to actually see that if I turn the engine on. So I just left the choke on a little bit more, um, just to give it a bit more room. But you can see if I... This has almost gone flat now. This joint is all compressed to almost be a flat shape. And you can see as I move it, it's not so apparent now actually because the choke's going on. As it gets to a slower idle, there's actually a noticeable sucking noise. And then as you restrict this, so I reckon that it's worth replacing that joint. This is a normal, this is now at a normal idle speed. You can see it's definitely, as I start messing with that joint, the engine changes revs. So this is what I'm trying to recreate. It's a very small component at two and a half centimeters by four centimeters. The hole has a diameter of about three and a half millimeters. I think the hardest thing about this will be uh, finding a material which will be which will seal well to the original pipes in the car. Um, I think I'll use PTFE for the main body of the T because it's obviously very heat resistant. So this is the moment of truth. I just friction fit these four millimeter plastic tubes into the four millimeter holes I drill. 
I think the fact that the PTFE um, kind of closed up as I was drilling it is actually an advantage. The fact that PTFE expands and then contracts again because it's made the fit very secure with all those holes. Shaking as so it was a bit indecisive on startup, but it seems to be running pretty strongly now. But in fact, as soon as I put the choke all the way in, uh, the problem returned. The engine was still hiccuping, etc. Uh, but don't be too sad. I did fix it in the end, and here's a picture of the car in happier times with a giant turkey leg on the roof. So, I was just about to give up because my little PTFE block, although it fit very well down there, um, the vacuum tube fix, um, did the job as it's supposed to do. It didn't actually fix the engine. Um, and I just noticed that the engine was running really well. I just shut the on it and suddenly it stopped working again and then and I also noticed if I touch the carburetor a little bit it makes this really weird squeaking whistling noise and then I realized the whole top of the carburetor is loose um, so I think I can demonstrate how that affects the engine and hopefully all I need to do is tighten a couple of little bolts down here and maybe there on the other side and that should hold that down and the problem should be solved. I mean I could tell it was going to be something loose because it was so intermittent. I cleaned the contacts on the wires here and uh, this plug here which is also the, the, it's obviously something to do with sensing the fuel mixture or controlling the fuel mixture in here so I cleaned those contacts seemed to improve it but it wasn't great but it turned out it wasn't a loose contact it's a loose entire carburetor so i think the carburetor was in the right position there but if i just going to stop now but I did cause it to stop by, by messing with it there you go so that's all it was all along <laughs> and hopefully I can just tighten these nuts there and it will be sorted another symptom of the problem with the carburetor was that there's actually unburnt fuel and, and crap actually coming through the exhaust pipe um, there was a lot of it uh, just now but I guess because it's petrol it's actually evaporated but you can still see the kind of greasy residue so there was a noticeably large amount of, of fuel not being burned by the engine which told me that the mixture for whatever reason was way off so there are four bolts around the base of the carburetor and one there the rest of them are hidden but kind of at each corner of this square plate under here. All I did was uh, tighten those up with a spanner, although they're quite hard to access. So immediately it seems to be at least running a bit smoother and there's no longer any noise or movement when I press the carburetor. Let's see if that continues when I put the on it. So the conclusion I've drawn from this experience is that when you Google or search YouTube for the problem of engine hiccuping, there are almost as many causes suggested as there are videos made about the subject. Um, I think the only thing to do if you run into that problem yourself is to check all the plugs, that is all the electrical plugs, all the vacuum hose connections, 
just make sure you clean off any corrosion on the electrical plugs check for uh, decaying rubber on the vacuum hose seals and then maybe as I found none of those things actually fixed the problem um, I'm sure they helped um, I'm sure the engine is running better now that I've done all those, those things uh, but the actual problem of course was that the carburetor was loose um, which because it looked fine uh, I think I probably could have taken it to the garage and I may not have found it and in fact the the bolts have probably been coming loose for such a long time that it it probably has been to the garage uh, several times without uh, the problem being noticed so there you go sometimes you just need to prod your carburetor and see if it's loose anyway I hope you enjoyed that video this channel is not really usually about cars um, it's usually about CNC stuff and electronics but the way that I see it the Volvo 240 is kind of an open source car there's so much information about how to fix it online which has just been generated by fans of the the car the, the there's no car made these days which has such a maintainable engine um, everything's accessible everything's mechanical and analog where possible um, I wouldn't say it's easy to fix but at least it's easier than most modern cars are to fix if you found that video useful even better if it actually helped you fix your car uh, please like share subscribe for more open source stuff goodbye and by the way if you're interested in what this last photo is this is a Volvo 345 I used to have. Um, I took it on the Nürburgring, drove it rather fast, um, and then it stopped working. It turns out that that was actually caused by a faulty seal on the radiator. So there you go. Check your grommets and your seals.